welcome back to Let's Talk It Out. We love our followers. We thanks, uh, thank our supporters and uh, we adore our subscribers. And we just thank everybody just for being there and listening to what we have to say in the podcast that we present because we do it for you. We love doing it also because we love our guests and they're completely <laughs> awesome, which we, are you laughing at me? Because we do it for you and now I'm going to announce the sponsors that give us money to do it. But hey, we no, do it we for do you. we do do it for you. Yes, yes. Stay behind the camera. Yes, we do it for you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, yes, we do do it for our viewers because without our viewers, we wouldn't be doing anything. Really, let's be honest. Um, but I, I have the pleasure. And the sponsors. To, let's I, be honest. <laughs> but I, ha- I always have the pleasure to introduce amazing, outstanding guests, talents. Absolutely. Uh, entrepreneurs. Um, and it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have um, all our guests on. It gives us the opportunity to really understand and, you know, learn about what they do. And we can always uh, correlate and we can always compare and we can always say, yeah, you know, I always had an interest in that, which is why this evening, um, this is going to be a very special episode as well, because it's kind of what I sort of touched in my earlier years, not that I'm old, but earlier years. And, um, you know, it's a very gifted, uh, the gentleman has a very gifted talent, but I'm not just going to say his name yet because we have sponsors. Keep you guessing. Keep you guessing. But we have sponsors and we can't do anything without our sponsors. We love our sponsors and adore them. Although we could do without our sponsors, we'd be a lot sadder. But we're thankful that you're here. And we will start off with um, our recurring sponsor, which is Mr. Van Cropsell, Mr. Remax Alliance. Van, thank you so, so much for sponsoring us again. Uh, Van Cropsell is an amazing real estate broker. He does commercial residential, takes out buyers, sellers, and he knows his stuff. He makes the transaction smooth, flawless, and he's definitely informed. 438-402-9471, V-A-N-C at remax-quebec.com or vancropsel.com. Thanks so much, Van. And we also have two new sponsors, which I'm very, very privileged and excited to mention. So our new sponsor um, that has just come up, his, it is Birra Fanelli. I love him. I love it. I Frank love Fanelli, him. thank you so much for sponsoring. And he actually has an array and assortment of beers which is over there. I'm going to get I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And he's him. going to get them. Actually, there are they are really interesting looking beers and I have to say they look scrumptious, stupendous. They have all kinds of flavors and they do supply to restaurants, bars, either at grocery stores as well, uh, depeneurs as well. And um, Frank was very kind enough to send us, you know, some spectacular looking beer. So this is uh, Rosso. Oh, also, nice. But just the can, you just want to, you know, frame it. <laughs> I'm so drinking that, by the yeah, way. So, <laughs> I don't know if you, I am. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, Frank, um, for allowing us and, 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 you know, sponsoring as well by sending us beer. That's fantastic. And uh, if anybody uh, wants, wants to reach Frank, um, the Facebook page is actually Birra Fanelli. So guys, check him out. It is wonderful it, the, the the cans are just colorful and they look absolutely um scrumptious so thank you so much again Bira Fanelli. and we have another hey vanny <laughs> uh, and we have another sponsor and he's a new sponsor as well thank you so much sos contractor uh so sos they work on kitchens tabletops, granites, kitchen cabinets. They work on your house. Apparently they are extremely, extremely refined, detailed, and they give amazing, amazing service. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking with Davide and he is unbelievably uh, thorough and he is definitely able to meet your needs should you have any contract work that you wish to do in your home as well as commercial. They also touch a bit on commercial as well. So in order to contact them, uh, they are at 2500 Rue Jarry East, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Info at soscontractor.com. Thank you so much, Davide. Thank you so much, SOS Contractor. And now we begin our podcast. Hold on. <laughs> now we begin the podcast. <laughs> there we okay. Go. Bani, he's just unbelievable. Um, I have the pleasure this evening to introduce, um, I'm sure, somebody we all know. And we're all familiar with an amazing musician, actor, voiceover actor, uh, 
as well as an amazing, outstanding talent who's just finished a project, which I won't get into right now. I'll let him get into it. <laughs> and a radio personality, used to be a radio personality. So we have so much to talk about. So I have the pleasure to introduce Mr. Lenny Yotso. Hi, welcome. welcome. Hi, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. welcome. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for accepting. And I know we see each other on Facebook, but it's a pleasure to finally meet you. And it's a real treat because I see the work that you do. I've read up a lot about you, and it's actually very fascinating on the work that um, and the roster of work that you've done. So first, before we begin on your projects, I'd like you to just speak about who Lenny is and how your beginnings, how you started in this wonderful business of entertainment. Uh, well, you know, I mean, as a kid, I always, you know, I always wanted to entertain and perform in front of people at home or with friends, you know, as I grew up. Um, I fell in love with music right away at an early age. Uh, my mom had purchased me my first guitar. I think it must, I must have been 14 years old. I was uh, self-taught and... Um, Got into a band, I think, when I was like maybe 18, 19. Oh, wow. Yeah, we did. We were, um, you know, we did a lot of uh, shows and we, we wrote uh, we wrote our own songs. Uh, it was really a good time for me. Uh, um, and um, yeah, and then once that kind of, um, you know, had to let that go, um, I decided to go into radio. Okay. Actually, that was my mother's idea. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know, because my mom was, you know, she saw was frustrated. I started working in restaurants and I started working in bars and, you know, I was a barista and a bartender and a waiter and which I still love today. I love serving people. Um, but my mom just looked at me one day and she said, you know, why don't you love performing? You love, why would you ever think about radio? And so I said, okay, well, radio, you know, it's all about you know, you have to know someone on the inside. You know how Italians yeah. are. It's always like, you know, you <laughs> we to, worry about things. We worry about everything. <laughs> everything. You know? and, um, so I, uh, I took a broadcasting uh, intensive course, which was, I think, something like eight, nine months. Oh, wow. And um, once I finished, I sent my resume to Q92. And lucky enough, I got an intern, uh, an internship <laughs> for three months, uh -huh. which ended up lasting a long time. Yeah, I think it was maybe seven, eight years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you were known as? Uh, as Lenny the intern. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember really? you. Yeah, absolutely. And it stuck because I was researching, uh, you know, to learn a little bit more about you and what you do. And I remember they said it was just that classic Lenny the intern that just stuck to everybody. And I said, mm. oh my God, that's so true. Yeah. And so you went. You must have enjoyed that that run. It was great. I mean, it was a lot of experience that uh, you can't pay for. You know, um, I worked with. Uh, I mean, I started with Aaron Tasso in the morning with Susanna Des Hotel, and um, you know, I always like to tell this story um, how I got the gig, how I got uh, to be an intern. Okay. Uh, it's a story I'll never forget. So I, I, I go for the interview the first day, and I was dressed really nice. You know, uh, I was dressed with like dressy pants, you know, and uh, just a nice shirt and everything. And um, so I get there and Aaron right away, just like in the first five minutes, he looks at me and he says, okay, listen, he's like, we're not, there's no interview here. There's no formal interview here. He said, um, so he tears, he tears out a, a, a page off a magazine and he, and he shows it to me. And on the page is this advertisement of all you see is two long chairs, a table with, uh, with, uh, with like two fruit drinks kind of thing. And it's overlooking the ocean. Okay. And he's like, I want to go on vacation to this place. He's like, but it doesn't tell me where it is. He's like, so if you could find out where this is, you got the internship. Really? So I'm oh like, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, how am I supposed to find that, right? So I remember um, it was a Friday because I had the whole weekend. And uh, I remember calling uh, one of my best friends. Um, and I said, look, you got to help me with this. I don't, I don't know where to, where to look, you know, where to start looking. So we, uh, we, we, we tried looking up uh, the magazine and, and, and the editor and this and that. We couldn't find anything. We, oh, my we, goodness. And um, come Monday morning, uh, you know, I show up, of course, with nothing on me, right? And, um, and everyone's like, so where is it? Where, where, where's the place, you know? And I said, look, I'll be honest with you. We, I spent Saturday and Sunday 
just researching this place, like uh, calling the magazine, sending emails. I didn't, I didn't get any responses. Like I, I don't know where, how else to look for for information. And um, and he just looked at me and he said, "Well, that's because it's impossible. Because if it's not written on the page, it's like you're never gonna. This could be anywhere in the world. Because I just wanted to see what you were gonna do." You know? <laughs> So uh, he said, you know, the internship is yours. Oh, so, nice. Oh, my God. Took off from there. Why, why does that sound like Aaron, right? <laughs> when you hear him on the radio, yeah. I, he's he's got that quirky side of him, that funny side, the, the prankster side. And, yeah. and, and it, it, it's so him. So I don't know. I, not that I know him personally, yeah. but he sounds like that type of guy. That's pretty funny. So. That's really yeah. hilarious. Yeah. No, he is. And I, I learned a lot from them. Uh, I, I learned a lot from Aaron. I learned a lot from Tasso. Mm. Two different... Two completely different uh, personalities. Yeah. Um, Tasso is um, very funny, very creative with his with his uh, with his characters that he came out with. Aaron is a lot more. Uh, he comes from journalism, so he's a lot more professional. Yeah. Uh, and he knows how to run a show, nice. and it's not easy. It really, eh? It's not easy. I can imagine. So, uh, when you you decided to leave or this this internship that you had, or is it were you inspired to do something else, or how did it come about that you escalated onto the acting platform? Let's say. Um. Well, I mean, you know, I got into radio, and I only realized this afterwards, but I got into radio as towards the end of great radio. And I have a lot of I have a lot of friends that are still in radio today, and and uh, and they love it, and that's great. You know, I'm happy for them. Um, but uh, when I got into radio, uh, maybe it's because I was working with Aaron and Tasso. I'm not sure. Maybe I just got lucky with them. But it was very creative. Every single morning, you know, we would we would prep for the for the morning after, and it was a lot. Okay, what are we gonna What are we gonna make fun of? Who are we make, gonna make fun of? What are we gonna do tomorrow? What's in the news? And and we just we were just very creative. Towards the end of it, after so many years, um, after I think maybe six seven years, um, you know, things started to change, and the, we call them the suits. You know, the guys. Meet, yeah. You know, um, they just, you know took things into their own hands um, and just kind of the creativity kind of slowly was diminishing, you know, and it was like, okay, we don't have that much time to, time to talk. Okay. Uh, we have to sell and we have to make sure we have to sell the, the song and sell the artist and, you know, and, and whatever is advertising on the air, we make sure we have, we have to, you know, promo them. And so it just kind of became a routine at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and then slowly, slowly, we kind of like, they split us up, you know, like, oh, they let okay. go of Tasso, they let go of Suzanne, then it was just Aaron at one point, and um, I was losing shifts also towards the end, I was working like one or two days a week. Okay. So, and then I met Rosie, hey. the love of my life, I know. <laughs> and uh, she was, uh, she was, you know, we started uh, seeing each other towards the end of, of my radio days, and... Um, and she just saw me and said, look, you know what? You should be an actor. Why don't you get into acting? Oh, nice. And um, from Behind there, every man. <laughs> yeah. You know? You know? There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's true. And she's been supporting me ever since, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah. Fantastic. So she got me into acting. I mean, I've always loved films. I've been watching movies since I was four years old. Um, and I did take some acting courses before I met Rosie when I was in radio. Um... But it just never really uh, hit me to do that transition. Oh, nice. So what is your favorite genre to do? Uh, to act, you mean? Yeah. To, um, if you have not done that genre yet, what would be the genre that you would like to try, let's say? Well, um, you know, it's, it's ironic because a lot of people say that I'm funny. But for me in comedy, it's, it's, it's just it's weird. I, I'm, I, I can be funny in real life. Give me a funny role, and I'll be like, okay, I gotta, you know, I get, I get nervous. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, it. <laughs> I find it's the hardest thing is to be funny. Um, but I, I love drama. Um, I mean, my uh, my dream is is to work. Um, I've always said my the two films that I'd love to work on is a western and a, a war movie. Western, yes, you wow. see. Now yes. wait, hold on a second. This is because I find it very interesting. You are in radio. You're just doing radio gigs. You meet Rosie. And she just suggests, hey, you should go into acting. And then all of a sudden, 
boom. That's it? You, that's you start it. acting? Like, wow. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we, I mean, as you know, I mean, yeah. it's Because that's an amazing story. That's like, like, I find that, you know, life doesn't really go that way. Like, some people dream about acting and they never get a push or some people, uh, you know, don't have the means or, or don't, or whatever it may be. Like, it's not, you know, people dream of being an actor or, or an actress and it just never happens or they try for so many years and nothing happens. They give up. You just met someone and she inspired you because she said, hey, you look like an actor. That's, That's fantastic. it's fantastic. Like it, it is something pretty extraordinary, I find. It's yeah. like and it just from there. Blossom. OK, yeah. I'm going to do it. And that's it. You know, I've always been someone to if I see something or something that makes sense to me. Uh, like I said, I've always been a, a movie lover yeah. all my life. Um, so when Rosie just mentioned it to me, said, you know, you should go, you should, why don't you become an actor? She goes, I totally see you acting, you know? And I was like, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, in life, you got to take that chance. You wow. know, you got you to gotta take that chance. I mean, it's, you only live once, you know? Yeah. And I mean, and acting is hard. Eh, ooh. Acting is hard. I <laughs> Auditions know. are the hardest. Auditions Never mind the, the film. <laughs> but I mean, acting is hard. You know, it's a, it's a, it's something of its own. You, yeah. you, you can't, uh, you can't, you don't just jump into acting either. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you got to train. That's I'm, why I'm saying, I'm like, wow, that's, that's as powerful yeah. words. <laughs> yeah. A lot of training. Amazing. A right. lot of training. I'm still training. So I, I've been, I've been acting I don't know now it's uh, I, I don't know every time somebody asks me how long you've been acting I think I've been acting I started training around 2007 okay yeah I'm still training today yeah you can't stop eh? it's an no, ongoing you have process to, you have to continue training it's yep. a must yeah um, and uh, the gigs are, are very scarce I mean especially here in Montreal it's very hard uh, and just even if they weren't hard, just getting past the audition is hard, you know, because there's a lot of actors out there that are really good. Yeah. And uh, you never know what they want, what they're looking for, you know, so you do your best and you move on to the next audition. You know? Yeah, well, especially when you have to have those portfolios and the portraits and the pictures and, yeah. you know, and now, it, now all of a sudden it changed from the black and white with the, the you know, the, the basic background to outdoors and now it's in color, yeah. like everything is just modified. So, yeah. and I know there's a lot of upcoming talent. So what was the greatest challenge for you to, to make that transition and to stick now with the acting mm -hmm. what was your challenge throughout the process and that uh, throughout the process and what is the challenge that you would see now right okay well I mean the first thing that came to mind was you know uh, my financial situation yeah, <laughs> so I'm like okay, if I'm gonna be an actor well how am I gonna make money yeah right and uh, because when I was in radio I was making money they were paying me um, and as an actor, I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to be an actor, how am I going to make money? So I, I did a lot of extra work. Okay, yeah. Did a lot of extra work and uh, just kept saying yes to every time, you know, they needed me on set. And around 2015, um, I got a gig as a stand-in. Good. Yeah. And, Very good. Um, it, was the, um, it was the first time that I ever done stand-in work. It's a lot different from, from extra work, of yep. course. And um, I had stood in for Ben Stiller for Brad Status. Oh, nice! Yeah, so I learned a lot. Oh, I see it. <laughs> I see it. Yeah, yeah. The Ben Stiller, I see it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I learned a lot from Ben. Um, I guess I can call him on one main basis. <laughs> ben, so bro. Call him ben, Mr. Stiller. Um, but I learned a lot from him. Looking at him, I worked with him for almost two months. Yeah. And. Um, you know, from someone who's training as an actor, when you're working alongside of an actor like that, you, you, you learn a lot, you pick up a lot. And yeah. it's, uh, it's great when you're on set and you can feed off somebody who essentially has that, I mean, it's not a natural gift, but some of them, it is a natural gift. You put them in front of the camera and they can just work their magic. Yeah. Uh, people like Ben Stiller, um, I mean, uh, Kira Knightley, just to name a few, Ed Harris, one of my favorites. Um, you know, these are actors that you sort of, they're solid, they're solid and they're very, very convincing. Um, so it's fantastic that you had the pleasure to work with somebody yeah. like uh, Ben Stiller. Um, so what are the challenges that you face though in terms of, yeah, so, I mean, the finance was pretty much the main thing. Like, how am I going to balance this? If I'm going to be training as an actor. And, mm -hmm. I mean, and then I met, of course, um, I don't remember when I met Sandy, but Sandy Martinez is my agent. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I think I had met her maybe the first year that I, I, I met Rosie. Yeah. Um, and um, 
and so you know, I mean, doing the the auditions and and uh, and all that, it's, it's it's hard to maintain even the the discouragement that we feel. It's there's so much against us. So I just try to focus on the fact that I love acting. I love being in. I love being on set. I, yeah. I always tell Rosie, like I could live on set, literally. You know, I, I know there was a problem that they were saying there's a lot of people that work too long uh, amount of hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. I never complain. I know. I was I the same complain. way. I, I think it's very, very, it's a comfort. Yeah. It's you're in your comfort zone yeah. because that's where you want to be. Yeah. Now, when you take on a role, even as a stand in, when you take on that role, how is it that, what is it that goes through your mind in that moment when you're trying to incorporate yourself within that role? Well, I mean, you know, I'm still training as an actor. Yep. Yeah. No matter how many years you know you're training, you're you're always learning something new. Yeah. Uh, and you're getting better and better at the craft. Um, so I mean, when I'm thinking about doing an audition, I'm thinking about the role. I try to remember some of the stuff that that I either read or 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 I've taken. I've taken uh, workshops or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I try to remember the training. Okay, what have I? I've trained so much. Yeah, yeah. You try to remember so much information that you're trying to remember, okay, so this role requires me. I just did, for example, I just did a really great workshop uh, called um, with uh, Jean-Louis Rodrigue and uh, Christophe Conrad um, with, it has to do with animal studies and the Alexander Technique. Mm -hmm. and, um, and these guys are from Los Angeles. Uh, Jean-Louis Rodrigue, uh, I met him in New York City last year last year mm -hmm. and um, I took this workshop with them and it just blew my mind like the level of coaching these guys have uh, they're, they're originally from Los Angeles yeah uh, Jean-Louis Rodrigue um, he uh, works a lot with uh, Margot Robbie okay yeah he's he's prepared her for Barbie he's prepared her for uh, Babylon and Itania so they work all very close together nice um, and I brought them here in Montreal uh, in October. I oh, said, nice. You guys have to come to Montreal. Actors need to, to understand this. I mean, I know they teach animal studies um, in theater. Yeah. But they don't really go into it. And these guys really are amazing at, at coaching that and turning you into the animal. And so when I'm doing auditions, yeah. I kind of. You know, see, okay, okay, do I have time to bring, to look for the animal in this character, okay, or or do I go with with this, or do I go with that, and you're just trying to... I know. You know you're just trying to organize all these great, uh, like, training ways of, of doing things, you know? Okay, yeah, I know, it could be kind of cumbersome when you try to organize, and yeah. every and every role I find that you, you, you have, every side that you get, and you have to try to figure out, okay, what's the scene? What is my angle here? What is my motivation? And then you're saying, okay, well, the tonality, you know, the, the, so you're, you're trying to, okay, now what can I bring to this role? And sometimes, I don't know if you've done it, but when you go, when I, I, I had a side, say for a specific role, I actually had, um, I had an audition, which I got the part. It was um, an, an Ontario based in 1800s mm -hmm. and I had to I was in prison or like in a jail cell and I had to my husband was there and I had to be very angry and in that moment you're you know you're nervous right you're nervous you, you have nerves and you say well, how am I gonna cry <laughs> right and they say think of something that impacts you something that will totally uh, blow your mind something that you cannot do without and then you think Right, and so then it starts. Right, and so yeah. they say you have to harness certain things, but to, yeah. they say it, but to do it, it's different. It's different, absolutely. And on a different level. Just tell me in. there's no beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start crying right away, man. Honey, all the beer on the planet is gone. <laughs> oh no! You know, but you're right though, because uh, something. That I, <clears throat> excuse me. Something I'm very proud of uh, that I overcame um, was that I, I haven't cried since. I think I was maybe 12, 13 years old. Wow. And um, it was always been the biggest block for me as an actor. Yeah. And until last year, I had to play an 86 year old man. Oh, wow. And who was dying. And there was no saving me. I was, I was, I was, in my, I was on my deathbed. And my daughter had to come. The scenario was my daughter had to come in 
and it was my last words to her and uh, I haven't spoken to her in years. Oh my god, so, I'm already crying. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that gets you, yeah. yeah. So um, I was there and I was like, okay, and in the script it said, you know, there's a there's tears. I'm like, okay. Have I seen? Yeah. So I kind of just went into, you know, my head and saying, okay, w what have you, what have you learned all these years? And, and, and I'm thinking of all the actors and interviews and, uh, you know, and, and workshops and this and that of, 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 um, of, you know, different ways of bringing the tears up. Some people, it's uh, going to your memory. Some people, yes. like maybe thinking there's no beer. <laughs> <laughs> it works all the time. Yes. What, whatever, whatever makes you sad, you know. Yeah. And it wasn't working for me to think of even a family member. Until that happens, I can't be sad about it. Yeah. It's just that's the way I am. Yeah. And so I went into this breathing technique where I was just breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. And I kind of went into this meditation while I was in the bed, you know, just a, maybe a minute or two before the door, there's a knock on the door. And, um, and then it hit me. My character is not supposed to cry because I haven't spoken to my daughter in a long time and I'm dying and it's the last time I'm going to see her. My car at least it was a choice I made. My character, um, is going to start crying because he's afraid to die and he's never died before. Yeah. And and when you do something you've never done before in your life, you get scared. Yeah. And uh, that's what brought the tears. Uh, the fact, so when my daughter came in, the first thing that came to my head was like, please help me get through this. Yeah. I'm going to be dying and I've never done this before and I'm afraid. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very strong. And so... Uh, Nice. And yeah. in terms of your biggest accomplishment thus far, what, what can you personal like, accomplishment? Personal. Not to, it doesn't have to be like uh, yes, it doesn't, know, have, doesn't to have to be a role. Or or, a role. Like yeah. a personal. What, what for you? The, was it that moment where? Because that's pretty fucking deep. Like what you just <laughs> said there, and how you channeled it. You found a way to channel it. Uh, uh, you know, is that? It could have been that. Is that your proudest moment as an actor, kind of thing, or? Is it a specific role or is it something that you channeled? Um, well, I mean, it's definitely something that I was very happy. You know, it was almost like a release. Yeah. But at the same time, I was proud because I could have, I said, you know what? This needed to be done in the script. This is what they wanted. And I did it. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want to try to tell the story that you know, the writer is, is, is trying to get across. Um, as far as biggest accomplishments, I mean... Um, in 2021, uh, I um, I worked on a on a movie called Bo is Afraid with uh, with Joaquin Phoenix, uh, and I was a stand-in, and um, I worked with him for about three months, and I learned so much, and, and and completely different from when I worked with Ben. It was just completely different the way you see the difference between actors how they work and how they approach their their roles and uh, or approach their scenes, and. Uh, it just brought me to another level as an actor to understand, okay, oh, I like the way he does it. Yeah. You know, because some actors, they, they make it look easy. And you're trying to look at them, okay, why, how do they make it look easy? And you're looking at it like, I don't see how they make it look easy. They're just doing it. Yeah. Um, but Joaquin really works hard. He's a hardworking actor and he makes it very noticeable that, you know, you see his, he's trying, you know, he's screwing up and he's falling on his face and, he, and he's just, let's do it again, let's do it again, let's do it again. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. And he's, uh, he wants to make it as real as possible. Oh, that's He's a great. really good actor, Joaquin Phoenix, but he works really hard at it. Mm -hmm. You know how they say, you know, you come to set prepared? Yeah. He comes prepared, but even on set, he'll take all this preparation and just like throw it. Yeah. He'll just say, and, and then he'll talk to the director and say, you know, um, why don't we do it like this? Let's try it like that. And nice. Just a, amazing, amazing. Oh, do, that do you get a feel of them, how, how these big names, uh, how they are as a person, like when they're working? Or do you just like uh, get amazed at how they work? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like anything in the arts, when you see them working, uh, when you see someone who's like at that level, it blows my mind, right? You see them working, and it could be anything. Painting, acting, singing, playing music. Do you, um, do you get a sense of their characters uh, off the screen? They're real person. They're real personality. Real person, let's when say. you're watching them work, like, when you separate them, you're yeah. from the role. 
So do I see who they really are in the character, not really, or do I like, see the separation? Do you see a, a, a part of their personality, like do in you the see, character, in, in the, the character. characters, yeah, like in in the way they work. I, I would say yes. Yeah, I would say yes only because um, I mean I see the way he is offset, and then I see him when he's you know when they call action and I see it. Um, yes, I mean they're taking a persona, right? He's he's, yeah. he's he's someone else. He's not Walking Phoenix. But at the same time, it's Joaquin Phoenix in that situation. Yeah. yeah. And how would he react to that? Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. And he's he's a really great person. He's a really... I've worked with a lot of, you know, actors okay. on set. And he's really, like, pure, um, genuine. I mean, he was he was changing garbages on set. He was helping the PAs change garbage bags. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I actually... I, I caught him doing that. I was like, wow. Yes. Looked at the third AD and I was like, "That's fucking what is happening?" <laughs> Do you learn? Like, I find I, I I play music, right? So, I find being on stage is the best lesson, or being mm -hmm. on stage with a maestro. You know, yeah. I learn so much in that. You know, I could do twenty five rehearsals. But five minutes with that dude on stage, and I learned way more than I ever have. Is it the same in acting? Do you look at a guy, do his performance, and say, oh, my God, you know, all those nights in the bedroom help? Yeah. But that five minutes of me watching this masterpiece, uh, that taught me so much more. Is that the same? Is it? Does it work that way? Or does it at least for you? It is. I mean, you know... Um... I'm sorry. Can you ask me that? Question? <laughs> like, because you were saying, yeah, like, like you know, you. I'm sure you practice a lot at home, or yes. you, you know, you go over your lines, you, right. and you learn right, quite right. a bit. But when right. you see someone like uh, Joaquin Phoenix acting, right. or being on the same set as it, do you learn that much more in that time? You know what I'm saying? You know, that's a great question, and and um, the only answer I have for you for that is is once you're in. The zone. Yeah. <laughs> the great. zone. Yeah. Once you're in the zone, anything is possible. And even no matter how experienced the actor that you're working with, no matter how experienced they are, you know, in that moment, you can be better than them. Yeah. It's, it's not about experience has nothing to, I find, experience has nothing to do with, uh, well, he's a better actor than he is. Because sometimes it, it, it depends on, on what's going on in the moment. True. And yeah. if, you really, if you're really genuine, in the moment, I mean, some you know, you can come up with some magic that it's going to yeah. really come out, and you didn't even prepare for it, and you say, "Wow, you know what? I was really in the moment." And uh, was I a better actor five minutes ago? Maybe I don't, I don't know, but it, it, it's it's kind of like a feeling, like you play guitar. I play no uh, drums and piano. You play drums yeah. and piano. So when you're playing an instrument and you're on stage. It's, you know when they say it, it, was, it was amazing, but it just had happened so fast yeah. that I, I felt so good in the moment. Yeah. You can't replicate that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then the next scene you do or the next show that you do, it wasn't as good as your last one, but that's fine because you're not supposed to compare. Yeah, exactly. You know, your yeah. shows, every show is different. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm. Uh, yeah, that kind of, kind of. You can't prepare for magic. Yeah. Yeah, you, but you, do you learn a lot when you see magic happening from someone else? Like, is it a teaching? Is it a... Yeah, you, you, you know, absolutely. You know, when I'm, when I'm observing, and I love observing, I mean, I get the same thing from, let's say we're talking about Joaquin Phoenix, so mm -hmm. I get the same thing from him that I would get from a stranger that I'm observing okay. uh, on the okay. street. See, that's a whole different perspective, you know? and that's I, an interesting. Thing. I look at that person, I'm like, wow, this, you know, like, this person is so weird, or is so beautiful, or so... Yeah. You know, I feel sorry for this person or, you know, this person's amazing or, or just whatever they're doing. I'm just looking at how they walk or mm -hmm. or how they're eating their ice cream, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and it's no different because they're acting. I mean, you know, there's a great uh, I mean, there's the famous line, right? The world's a stage. And yes, the world's a, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and so that's that's so true because the world is a stage. We all play a part. Yeah. You know, and uh, but I find as an actor, would you say that you find creativity in everything? Absolutely. Because you're an observer. So yeah. let's say for the smallest, minutest thing, whether it be a cat walking, a stray cat on the street, you have, you always have that, that a vision or a creative Absolutely. vision. 
and you sort of attribute, I, like I would anyway, I attribute a feeling to something, you know, so that it, it inspires you. And I find as an actor, inspiration is very, very pivotal. Absolutely. Because it, 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 it helps you to incorporate into your role as well. Yeah. Now, uh, would you say you're more of a method actor? How would you, how would you encompass a role, let's say? You know, I saw an interview with, um, it's not coming to my mind, the girl in uh, Titanic. Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet. And um, I always get mistaken between her and Kate Kate Blanchett. Beckinsale no, or Blanchett. Blanchett. Yeah. I like them both. They're yeah. amazing. So um, I saw an interview on Instagram uh, from Kate Winslet, and she was asked the same question. She said, do you have a method? After all these years, uh, do, you have, do you have a method? Do you go by a certain um, technique? And she said, you know, when I was younger and I would get asked that question, I would have an answer to that question and say, yeah, you know, I, I do a lot of this or I do this or I do that, you know. Um, but now, as she's more, you know, I'm not going to say she's established, but I can say that she's a, she's a lot further in her career than she is now. Yeah. Uh, she said, I'm always learning. She goes, and, and every character is different. It's like it's, it's a new script. It's new work. Yeah. I cannot use what I did for the previous gig to this one. It's totally different characters. So it's yep. a different approach to the character. Um, so I guess that would be my answer as well. You know, it's, it's and my, my, my method actor, no. What I, do I think there's such thing as method acting? Maybe. I mean, I guess. I mean, if I want to, if I want to, you know, go into like, you know, some deep memory or, uh, or if I have to like physically do something to myself to, to get into the character or, you know, um, I know some, some actors have done that in the past. You know, and they have where, perished in the process. Heath Ledger? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a great, yeah. great example, you know? And, uh, so I, I don't think I'm, I think when I first started acting, I kind of wanted to be that kind of actor, but then as I, I learned the craft, and um, I started, you, you, you kind of have more respect for the craft when you trust the, the, the techniques. Yeah. When you trust the techniques and you're learning from these other great coaches and you're like, you know, I don't have to do all that. That's unnecessary. That's really unnecessary. I can just like really just learn the craft. Yep, exactly. And, um, and, and, and it'll be there, yep. you know? It, it's amazing when you have an eye-opening experience and the light goes on. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it, that's when you sort of take the, the horse by the rein and say, now I'm ready to gallop. Right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's all, it's also trial and error. Okay, this doesn't Absolutely. work. Should I do it with an accent? Should I do it with a, a you know, a little twitch? I mean, yeah. to add a character or to your role. Now, you just finished um, a role. Would you like to tell us a bit about that? Um... Are you, are you talking about which one? The one you just finished, Ghost. Oh, Ghost. Okay, so. Uh, or or is there, if there's another one as well. No. No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, right, oh, right. Nice. Okay, well, that's this is my uh, love, my agent, <laughs> my manager. She's okay. my publicist. She's, 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 she's everything. That, there you go, there yeah. you go. Yeah, so I, I mean, I got a role in, in uh, Bo is Afraid. Uh, that was, that wasn't my last role, but that was, uh, that was a really nice experience. That was the first time I ever got a role in, in a big film like that. Nice. Um, the middle of filming, he wrote a scene in specifically, because he like fell in love with Lenny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was special. That's great, that's yeah. great. That is. Yeah. Right on the spot like that when the script is written? That's pretty, yeah. that's that's neat. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, uh, I just finished, we just wrapped uh, Ghost season three. Um, I don't have a role on that, but I'm working as a stand-in, so I'm standing in for one of the uh, one of the ghosts. Oh, nice. That's so, cool. Yeah, that is cool because the set is really incredible with the guys done with the set. Um, it, uh, it did such a great job and they're always reusing the set because it's like it's one big huge mansion yeah uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, any I've episodes. seen I've seen some of the episodes yeah um, and just you know the costumes you know we have to dress like the ghosts as well you know and uh, um, it's really a great crew it's really a great crew and we're on season three we're moving on to I think I think we're going on to season four. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're keeping our fingers crossed, but, you know, the air is cl is almost clear. Nice. You know? So, uh, it's not for sure, so I don't want to say that it is, 
um, but we're crossing our fingers for season four because we love working on, on that set. It's really a lot of fun. And how was makeup? How many hours is makeup? You know, uh, we don't put makeup on. Um, <laughs> We don't put makeup you don't on. want you don't want to give it away. I don't want because yeah. the reason why I ask is because when I did uh, I, extra work, I was at uh, <clears throat> uh, X Men Days of Future Past, and I remember sitting at three in the morning on that in that you know in that chair, and they were doing my hair and my makeup at three a.m. Like I gotta be out of my mind, <laughs> right? Be out of my mind do they do. have beer like in the <laughs> actually they have they have everything you know and on the set with the catering yeah. I mean, they have everything like, you you wake up and you're like oh my god yeah <laughs> like, where do you go like where do you begin it's it's amazing it's yeah. like a feast for a king um so that's why i brought it up because i know sometimes the actors when they sit down and they're doing the hair and then i when they cut and the little powder girl comes the little makeup yeah. artist comes out and she's like okay well, I didn't I, do anything. <laughs> I remember I've heard some stories of some actors that like it's like four hours of makeup before they start every morning kind yeah. of thing. Uh, well, when I was, you know, Bo is Afraid was probably the most challenging I've ever done as a stand-in. Um, uh, in the last uh, maybe seven, eight years that I've been doing stand-in work. Uh, it's the most challenging one. And I don't, I'm not sure if you saw the film, but there's a lot of makeup there. And there I had to spend hours... Uh, yeah, putting on makeup. I had to show up like two, three hours before. Oh, God, yeah. And they would like just put like, they had to make me bald and then put, put this wig on me that to make me look like I have like hardly any hair but white and, you know. And, oh, uh, my gosh. Uh, many, many times uh, throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole shoot. And because he, he, I don't want to give it away what happens to the character, yeah. but he's busted up. Yeah. And so I had to constantly every day look busted up, whether it was a smash over here or a, or a cut over here. Wow. Um, so they try to make you, at least with that, they try to make you as close as possible to the lead actor. Oh, very nice. Yeah, sometimes they don't, and sometimes they really want you to be as close as possible. Now, all of this work that you've done, all this the, 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 as a musician, as a radio personality, and into acting, at this moment in time, where do you see yourself in the next five, maybe ten years? In Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has that same answer. Yeah. Uh, no, actually. It could happen. Yeah, of course, and it will. Um, uh, no, uh, I don't see myself going into uh, going into any other industry. I mean, I love. I've always loved performing. Um, I I love acting. I think I want to continue. I know I want to continue uh, acting um, because I'm even though it's you know almost ten years that I'm I'm, tr I'm still training as an actor. For me, ten years is just a little glimpse of the industry for me, um, and um, you know there's so much to learn. Yeah. There's so much to learn. I mean, there, there there's people that I know that it's 25, 30 years that they, they're actors and they're still learning new things about different you know like we were talking about before about you know different characters different ways of approaching um so it's a lifelong thing being an actor where do you what it would be your ideal role um well um like i said earlier i would yeah. love to be in a western uh and i'd love to be in a really good war movie Nice. You know, like uh, like uh, Saving Private Ryan, Ryan or, or yeah. you know, like or Platoon or or anything like anything like that. Just a really good war movie. Yeah, and yeah. I, I I always fancied uh, period pieces. Yeah, period pieces. My God, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. So much, yeah, of course, any period piece is a lot of fun, you know, because we it, it's not it doesn't exist anymore, right? Exactly. So like, yeah. Yeah, you get to try, catapult yourself, or transport yourself to another yeah. place, and you can, you can, you're allowed to ride a horse yeah. there, you know, on the on the on the the, the dirt, you know. Yeah. You're allowed to roll around and shoot people with a pretend gun. Yeah. You're allowed, and it's okay because it's a movie, it's a movie. and it makes it fun. Yeah. And that being said, we're gonna have some fun now because I have a game. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. but my questions are here. Oh Hang on. <laughs> Let's see if I can grab it. Manny, for yeah. you. <laughs> so, I made up these questions. Now, don't, don't, do not fear. <laughs> Although many do, I fear myself when I have to answer. Trust me. Uh, so, this is more of a rapid response game. 
it's so called what, rapid it's called ra- it's yeah. basically they're weird questions that she comes up with probably when she's doing her makeup in the morning or something. <laughs> and um and so you know whatever comes, comes to your mind first to, to your mind first yeah okay. uh so i'll ask lisa first you'll see how she responds and then you'll get the second i'm one. not really sure how i would respond so <laughs> lisa <laughs> name three things you'd find in a fairy tale um a fairy tale a unicorn okay um I would find fairies. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. And uh, dwarves, like little, little, you know. Okay. Like hobbits almost, you know. Okay. Okay. Know Rings, uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was um, a good movie, by the way. <laughs> all right. So this one's for you, and it's name three things you eat with a spoon. I'm going to say my first thing <laughs> that came to mind is spaghetti. Yes, oh! I'm with you. <laughs> And you know what? They look at us weird because in Italy, it's like, Taboo. no, you do not use a spoon. Really? But I, I can't do it without it. Yeah. Look, the only reason why I like using a spoon is because after it's twirled and you put it in your mouth, there's no... Exactly. <laughs> and then you get it all over your... It's your, the perfect bite, you know? It's the perfect bite, nice and rolled. And, yeah. yeah, I'm with you. Man. And I just find, you know, it's, it's <laughs> etiquette. You know, you just, it's nice and I'm neat. totally with you. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, and my grandfather always told me, he said, when you're eating uh, anything you're eating, never start from, you know, like like you're eating here and then you're eating there and then you turn the plate and then you're eating oh. here. The plate stays as it's presented to you. So if you put it there, then you work from here and you work your way up. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Wow. wow. <laughs> Stinks. <laughs> you learn when you're a kid. That's a, I can't have my kids, like, uh, it takes me days to get them to put their feet down. <laughs> Imagine, don't turn the plate, what? But anyway. Okay. So, so, it's your spaghetti. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, okay, since we're going to, you know, talk Italian cuisine, uh, yeah. there's a um, pasta fagiole. Pasta hey, fagiole. Yes. Yeah. And my personal favorite, ice cream. Oh, ice cream. yes. What's Gelato. your flavor? Flavor. Um, you know, I really <laughs> love chocolate ice cream yeah i'm gonna stick with chocolate yeah. ice cream. Oh, that's yeah, i'm so with good. you it's my go-to as well yeah lisa what name three know, types of underwear three types of un- oh that's my question yeah i wrote that yeah okay. you did <laughs> three types of underwear so <laughs> you with- were sending this to somebody else <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry uh, boxers <laughs> um i guess uh thongs and g-strings there you go, there you go. okay so now this one, okay. Name three things that make you laugh uncontrollably. That would be my girlfriend Rosie. Oh, good uh, answer. She's the only one that can make me laugh like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uncontrollably. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I'm very ticklish under the feet. Okay. Okay. Cool. You know, I'm cool. very ticklish under the feet, and uh, uncontrollably. It's hard, eh? Wow. You know. Uh, you know, I when I watch those videos of people, it's sad, but the people that get hit or, you know, like... They injure uh, themselves? They're standing there and people are skiing and they just fucking get pounded by a skier yeah. or something. I saw it the other day where a reporter was <laughs> reporting on kids coming down and one kid went straight to his legs and the guy with the mic like flipped over. <laughs> that was not a good idea. <laughs> He's on his back like this. And I was just dying of laughter. Anyway, that makes me laugh like crazy. Those... Yeah, I don't know. For I guess the third one, I, um, you know, I, I mean this in in the in the the most, you know, dearest part of my heart. I love people, and like I said earlier, I love observing people. I do it like twenty four seven. Actually, not when I'm sleeping, but <laughs> but uh, but I love laughing at people. Yeah, I laugh at myself. Yeah, you and have. I, yeah. And I think the world needs to laugh at each other. You. It's it's we have to, no matter what it is. You know, sad what, that we lost. Um, the Just for Laughs Festival. Yes. Yeah. This year, it's gone. Yeah. It's like, what the? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll s- maybe next year. Yeah. Hope Gotta so. Hope yeah. for that. Yeah, hope yeah. So. Absolutely. Okay. So the next one goes to Lisa. Name three. Th- uh, oh, no. Sorry. Name three things you can catch. A ball, a butterfly, and a bird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're fast. <laughs> I wrote them. <laughs> Uh, all right, now name three squishy foods. <laughs> this, th- I wrote that, I'm like, oh, this it's all is all about tough. food, eh? <laughs> squishy. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And brain mind bender, mind Jello, bender. Jello, Jello. 
I was thinking Jello. I was drinking Jello okay. too. So okay, Jello, um, ricotta. Ricotta. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. And uh, maybe uh, potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Very like, squishy. Yeah. 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 That that works. Totally okay. works. There's a bonus here. I put a bonus question. Yeah. For both of us to what answer. Is this? Name okay. three types of pasta that, that don't, don't end in an end I. In an I. Yeah. Uh, so like spaghetti is discounted. It ends with it, yeah. Oh boy. Name three types? I can barely yeah. think of one. Uh, oh my god. Okay. A fettuccine? No. Linguini? Fettuccine. It has an E at the end. Oh my god, okay. Linguini? Right. It ends with an E or ends with an I? E. It ends in an E so it works. Yeah. Oh, it has, so okay. It, so which one ends in I, an E? Uh, fettuccine, linguini. You can tell she wrote the questions, yeah? Uh, no, no, I, I just thought of it. No, you know why? Because I'm thinking spaghetti. I'm like, okay. You know, uh, maybe it depends where you come from. The, the, true. What part yeah. of Italy, but Italia, Italia, like, tagliatelle. Tagliatelle. No, tagliatelle, yeah. Lasagna. Medaglione. Medaglione. Lasagna. It has an E. Is it an I? No. <laughs> lasagna is the best pasta lasagna. I've ever seen. Lasagna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lasagna. What else? Yeah, you see, it's very hard, eh? <laughs> Or like rigatoni, gnocchi, penne. Yeah, wow. penne. See? Penne. Yeah. Penne is good. You can't say rotini or fusilli. No. Nope. Jamelli, no, you I'm can't hungry. say. I don't know. How about the, all, <laughs> this, all this food talk? Like, what, what's going on, man? <laughs> so, so what else? I don't know. I think you've mentioned everything that I've eaten. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she took it. She took the steam out of uh, all of it. She said yeah. them all. Like she I'm went just... through the Rolodex. <laughs> no, wait, wait. I don't even know if there's anything else. Mm. <laughs> I have no idea. That's pretty much. I it. think that's it. Yeah. So um, I think yeah, I think we've reached our end. That was that's nice. That was fast. That is fabulous. Oh, that is not good. It, anyway, it's okay. no, nothing great. like renovations <laughs> during a podcast. <laughs> Yay! That's great. So um, now with a, a unfortunately he's. Wow. It's okay, we hear you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so this is the end of our podcast. I'm really sad because we had a really good this was time. Great. Yeah, it, it was fun. Yeah, well, what's what what's fun. what's in store for you? What's your your next step? project? Your yeah. Next, uh, um, um, well, um, I um, I might be working. Uh, I'll, I'll know in the next 24 to 48 hours. I might be working on a, a new project that's. Uh, with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, oh, nice! My a, daughter loves Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Wow. So um, that might be. Uh, I don't know. Rosie's giving me signals. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's see. Once again, my publicist, manager, agent, <laughs> slash. Um, but yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be working on. Uh, I'm looking in the next 24 to 48 hours. I'll know if I'm working on that uh, as a stand-in. Nice. Um, and I'm also working on a project. Uh, a TV series called Lenny's. Yay! Um, oh wow! Are you joking? Was in the pilot right there, yeah. Wow, what, what a, a small, small world! world. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was, it was a, yeah. Well, he wasn't there for the, for the, yeah, no. for the official shoot, but you know what? He did such a great job too with his character. It was great, even though it was nice and short, but it was perfect. It was perfect. Oh, great! Oh my god! So we're, uh, we're seeing, we're, we still, we're still working on the writing. We have to do a lot of rewriting and. Oh, really? I want to direct in the future as well, wow. of course. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. I mean, with Very all this nice. experience on set that I've been picking up from, yeah. even, I mean, you're not only learning from actors, you're learning from directors, you're yeah. learning from the ADs, you're learning from from everything, everybody, everybody that's going on on set. Yeah. And yes, um, what I do with Audrey. Jean-Louis, Montreal. Right, right, of course. Yes. Yeah, so Jean-Louis is coming back uh, this year. We don't know when, so we're going to have a meeting about that. But I'm gonna have them come back um, and, uh, and do a workshop, and I'll be going to New York. Um, hopefully, uh, I already made a submission, so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be going back to New York in June and work with Larry Moss. I don't know if you know Larry Moss. Oh my God! Yes, uh, didn't he do uh, not Seinfeld? Uh, he did. Um... <sighs> well, he's a, he's a coach. He's a coach. Oh, I thought you okay, okay. I thought You're you... thinking of Larry David? Yeah, Larry David. Larry David. No, no, no. Sorry, yeah. Felt. That's no, same guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same guy. Uh, Larry's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But uh, no, Larry Moss is uh, is one of the best coaches in in, in, in North America. You know. Yeah. Yeah, almost wow. in the world. Like, yeah, he's like the Strasburg of our time. He's the the, wow. the, the Meisner, the, the Stella Adler. This is 
this is this is the guy and this um, is the truest form of yeah, yeah. I mean, he, great. Ta he taught Leonardo DiCaprio mm. uh, as one of the names that I can think of right now but he's he's, he's that's that's enough like <laughs> to be honest there like yeah. oh Leo oh, okay <laughs> yeah I already trained with him already uh, two years ago but wow. on Zoom because of the whole pandemic thing yeah um, but he's got a studio in Los Angeles he's but he's now in New York and um and for the first time in four years, he's going to be in studio, in person, coaching. And when wow. we, Rosie saw that, she sent me a message. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And so I'll be, I'll know by April first if I'm in or out. What would you do without Rosie? That's a whole podcast. <laughs> Nothing. That's a whole podcast. Right Zero. There. No, we got Sandy. I think. Shouldn't you go? Oh, we I got think Sandy. You should, I think yeah, you should get, get in there and say get hello. In there. Just a little high, you know? <laughs> but no, I, I, I owe a lot of my thanks to, to Rosie and a lot of my thanks to Sandy, my agent. Uh, without her, I wouldn't be doing auditions. Without her, I, I wouldn't be training as much uh, as I am uh, in order to do well in these auditions that she gives me. So it's, 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 it's so important to have a great relationship with your agent. Not, yeah. not, not only because you, want, you, know, you don't have the relationship so she can keep feeding you auditions, but I mean, it's about trust. You want to yeah. you want to trust, and and you definitely need your agent to really believe in you. And yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what she believes in me, but uh, well, but but she does, and, good. and uh, I love her for that. It really makes me want to continue moving forward. Well, yes, because they believe in you. So sometimes when you have that that glimmer of hope, and then oh yeah, they didn't get the audition. It's yeah. okay. There's always something else. There's always yeah. something better. Yeah. So you will, I, and I find that with every audition, you do improve. Yeah. You do. So you are, you know when you walk into that room, how you carry yourself, what they're looking for. You know, it, it's all interpretation. And like you said, when you first walk in, that's what it is. Unfortunately, it's it's what they see. Like that's those right. first few seconds you walk in, it's like, hmm. They know or right away. They know right away. Where can we find you? Yeah. Where can we find, where can people follow you? Where can uh, they... You can find me sometimes in Maxi or in IGA. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, no, Bonanza, 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm. I mean, uh, I'm on. I'm on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay. Um, under my my name, yeah. Lenny yeah. Otso. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Perfect. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not more or less. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's, where that's I, awesome. That's enough. Right? Yeah, that's I mean, it. yeah, it's enough. <laughs> you know, I have so many passwords that I have to remember. Oh, I don't, God. Just just tonight before coming, we had dinner and I. And, and for some reason the tap wasn't working, and so he tells me to put it in. You know when you. Yeah. And so it's asking me for my my uh, oh, my number, yeah. and I'm like, Yeah. Okay, wait what a was, minute. What's the number? And I was like, I can't remember the number. But I gotta yeah. take out the app that has a password. Now I can't remember. I have an app that has all my passwords, but I forgot the master password. For to get into the app. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, whatever. That's yeah. life. So we keep it at a. Exactly. A limit. Yeah, then, well, thank you so much, Lenny, for, for accepting to, to come on and appear on the show. It was, you know, this was really, really nice. I'm really glad. I'm glad. And it you're was, great. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, so are you. Oh, so you. are you. You're yeah, all you're great. great. Everybody's great. Everybody's great. But I thank you so much. Honestly, I think it gave, it gave us a little bit more of an insight as to who you are, where you came from, and, and what your aspirations are, and where you what you will achieve. Because I, I'm sure you will achieve a great many things, especially that you're continuing to evolve. And that's the best thing that you can do, especially yeah. in acting. So congratulations for that. I wish you success. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, don't forget to catch us um, on uh, Let's Talk It Out and our brother channel, um, um, Sessions with Sessions Steph. Sessions with Because he's right there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm here the in my head. So um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. See you next time. Have a good evening. Ciao. Bye. Bye.